Good evening. I would like to call the Planning Commission meeting of September 19th, 2007 to order. Um, the format for this evening will be that uh, the staff, oh sorry, uh, we will call for items on the agenda as listed, staff's report will be asked for, and then anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on the item will be called for. Um, and the first item on our agenda under plans, policies, ordinances for discussion and possible action is City of Stillwater 12th Avenue Land Use Plan, Amendment to Comprehensive Plan and Land Development Code, PZ-17-2192, request, requesting review and approval of an amendment to the Stillwater C3 Comprehensive Plan 2030, Chapter 9, Areas of Special Interest, and Text Amendment to Land Development Code, Chapter 23, Article 13, Overlay Districts, by adding overlay districts for the 12th Avenue Land Use Plan Study Area. Ms. Dennison is going to give her report. Thank you, Paula Dennison, Development Services Department. Um, what we have before you this evening, you have seen components of it before, but I'm going to go through um, what uh, is included in your packet. And um, identify the, um, the other options and alternatives that are available. The first thing is the 12th Avenue Land Use Plan study area. That is the area outlined in the dark purple and in the hatched area. It uh, includes property um, from Washington to halfway between Pine and Walnut. On the south side of 12th Avenue, up to 11th Avenue. A little bit of background about this project. In October of 2016, a rezoning request was filed for for some property in the study area um, to go from RSS to office and RTM. As part of that, through the rezoning process uh, with Planning Commission and then City Council, the city council had taken action on it. It was asked to go back before the city council to um, reconsider the action that was taken. It was reconsidered. The action by the council was reconsidered. And then the city council chose to postpone any further consideration of that one rezoning request until a public process with possibility of an amendment to the comprehensive plan was completed. All of this occurred between October of 16 and January of 2017. So picking it up in January of 17, um, staff um, notified the study area and um, uh, area notification area outside of the study area um, in excess of the 300 feet because at this point in time it was for consideration and discussion of any changes to the comprehensive plan. Through that planning process the um, proposals came back to the Planning Commission and the City Council in May of 17, so January to May of 17 was when that, that planning process occurred. In May of 17, the City Council uh, remanded back to the Planning Commission because the Planning Commission, you had sent a recommendation to the Council. The Council evaluated it and remanded the 12th Avenue plan with your recommendation back to the Planning Commission with some specific direction for staff to work with the neighborhood to narrow the number of uses in the mixed use overlay and to expand the geographical area of the conservation overlay. So with that remand back to the Planning Commission, um, staff contacted the neighborhood and met a couple of times, the neighborhood met a number of times um, throughout the summer and the neighborhood has come up also with a proposal. So that's background of where we started and how we have gotten to where we are this evening. Any questions on that so far? And please feel free to interrupt me if you have questions or, or comments on anything. So where we are tonight. Um, we have um, provided four options. Those were included in your packet. 
Option one is the neighborhood proposal from the work of the neighborhood throughout the summer addressing the direction that the city council gave when they remanded the item back to the planning commission. Since um, the neighborhood is the one that, that developed this proposal, we have uh, two or three representatives from the neighborhood this evening who would like to participate in the staff report component of, of this public input session, this hearing, um, so they can present their proposal to the Planning Commission. So if you'll allow me to, I will step aside and turn it over to the neighborhood representatives to present their component as option one. Can I ask a question? Uh, south of 12th Street, east of Walnut is white on that map. So is that supposed to be commercial in that area? Or what is that? I, I will let the neighborhood okay. e explain their proposal to the Planning Commission. But I, I also have some, um, can answer that if I'll if wait after the neighborhood and see their input. Okay, thank you. Turn it over to the, to the neighborhood. My name is Michael Oliver. I live at 1123 South Gray, and I've been a part of the neighborhood group that's worked on this proposal. And to answer your question that you had for Paula, um, we are concerned that the maps don't have enough detail and need to be edited before any decisions are made. And we're somewhat concerned that the notice was not given before 30 days. The letter we got for the notice was dated September 7th. The meeting for the city council is October 2nd, so that is not 30 days notice. Um, so we think it should be postponed and rescheduled to clarify the maps first. Um, but the process that we went through to come up with our proposal, we had eight meetings once a week for eight weeks. We followed the city council input and created a larger conservation area and a narrower mixed use uses and geographical area for the mixed use overlay. Each meeting we had roughly eight to 12 participants with a total of roughly 20 individuals from the neighborhood area. Our starting point was the planning staff mixed use and conservation overlay that we then made adjustments to, to fit the uses and conserve the neighborhood as we saw fit. Um, mixed uses on Washington Street, we see a need for a north-south corridor from 6th Street to 12th Street between Western and Duck Street because there is not easy north-south access currently. Um, and we also don't see a need for commercial development along 12th Street. As an example, there is a office building that was built on the south side of 12th Street um, across from Pine Street. It has room for, I believe, four businesses and it is currently vacant since completion. I live within sight of that building and I do not see any interest or any individuals looking at the building with interest to move their business there. Uh, 12th Street is a 40, four lane, 40 mile per hour limited access road and should remain such. So development would add access and slow down traffic which was not the original intent of the widening of 12th Street. Um, I already spoke to this but Mike, you had a question about the map and I think the maps need some development before a decision could be made to make sure that the proper information is conveyed of the current zoning and future land use. And then we did have input from Gary Clark to help us understand the process that we should follow and formulate our ideas. Do you have any questions about our process? No. Okay, thank you. My name's John Pollock and I live at 1106 South Adams. And I want to give you a little more detail about how we set the boundaries. As Mr. Oliver said, City Council encouraged us to expand the neighborhood conservation area and to shrink the uh, mixed use area, both in size and scope. We actually, at one time, looked at the entire area from Western to Duck from 6th to 12th. And in looking at that, we tried to see 
if somewhere in there was a homogeneous, contiguous area that it made sense to, you know, define. So to the west, uh, just past Willis is a park area. And on the other side of that park area are newer and larger homes. And uh, even the city has said that we live in an area that's one of the few what, what they term as affordable housing areas. So we thought it didn't fit either geographically or economically. And plus, there's the whole issue of Western. And we thought that was taking on too much to even go there. So we set the west boundary at Willis. The north boundary, you've got established medical center, businesses. I mean, they're there. They're going to be there. Uh, so we just pulled away from that. We went down far enough south to get out of anything that the hospital or medical center owned. So we went to 8th, started going west. And then you get over around the uh, gray walnut area. There's some offices in there. We skirted around those to the south, picked up 9th, and went on. So that's the north boundary. The south boundary, 12th, just made sense to us. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, clean line, all residents along in there. And uh, as, as Mr. Oliver alluded to, it's, it's a 40 mile an hour four lane. In the Stillwater Transportation Enhancement Plan, in the recommendations, the widening of 12th Street was number two on their priority list. And they defined it as a collector street. And a collector street is uh, to provide for a balance of traffic movement, property access, connecting the residential neighborhoods, parks, churches, et cetera, et cetera, with the arterial systems, and to provide efficient traffic circulation and preserve amenities of the neighborhoods. And I took that right out of the transportation plan. Uh, on the north side, particularly, there are very few driveways uh, coming on to 12th. I understand the city would like to keep it that way, to keep traffic flow flowing and keep it safe, and we agree. So anyway, that's what, how we set the south boundary. And then as in the east, it was similar to the west. You've got a park, you have some open, undeveloped land, some of it's in a floodplain, and that just looked like a good place to set the east boundary but it also looked like a good place uh, to encourage mixed use. There's already some mixed use there, but, uh, and then this is getting a little outside the scope, but with a little, little uh, few changes in traffic control, I think that could be a good north-south route along there. You know, you've got one at Duck that's real good, and you've got one at Western, and the others are just kind of meandering through the neighborhoods. So that's basically how we set the boundaries. Any questions? Can you talk about the white area south of 12th that Mr. Buchert was asking about? Pardon? Uh, Mike, do you want to repeat your question about? The oh, what's the white the area? If you, why don't we put the map up there? So this is the neighborhood's proposal. We, and I want to understand, does the neighborhood have any proposal south of 12th Street, I mean the east of Walnut? Because it's in white, which means no, you did not address that. We did not address that. And what I understood your comment being, you limited it to 12th Street and didn't address anything south of 12th Street. That is true. So you don't have any recommendation for that area? It's already to be quite honest, we just said that's gone commercial. It's going commercial. We're not going to get into that. Okay. That answers my question. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shirley Weeks. I will spare you my brief explanation of how we got here. Paula gave you a, a good description of it. The one thing I want to say is uh, at the night of the uh, city commission, uh, it was just this area was uh, the overlay, part of the overlay plan was to preserve and protect a viable 
moderately priced, well-located residential neighborhood. That was one of the justifications for uh, us considering them over overlay. Uh, we were so excited to be working together on the 12th Street overlay. We had many meetings, uh, learning, sharing information, assigned tasks. We talked about overlays, planning standards, methods of preservation and conservation, tools to use for a diverse neighborhood to use diversity as a strength and a learning tool for our neighborhood. So much to learn, so much desire. The more we learned, the higher our desire was to design a plan for our neighbors and our friends. The maps were not helpful. We learned to use regular standard street map for factual information and to orient ourselves in the neighborhood. We kept moving forward. New participants added their story, information, and experience. We just kept moving forward. We maintained contact with the de development service people, and they were helpful. We talked about how to use contiguous, and I have here misspelled, neighborhood not demonstrated on the maps. The maps confused rather than clarify uh, <coughs> clarify the situation. Here are some quotes that won't be named who said them. The more we looked at the maps, the more deplorable we found them. They are misleading, confusing, and inconsistent. Color legend on maps are not consistent. Color mapping is a tool to use to assist you, not to confuse you. The worst map is the 12th Street overlay map. That map has been altered since I wrote this. I had not seen this map when I wrote this statement. So maybe it's some better. We had to work to identify uh, some things in our neighborhood and some things on the map we didn't recognize. We should postpone this, dis uh, this decision of the Planning Commission until the maps are correct for you to be able to look at them and see that 12th Street doesn't just end right in the middle of a block. These are just some this and that's that I came to my mind. There seems to be a confusion about the function of 12th Street and its designation. There are good examples of traffic moving streets or limited commercial. Jardo and Ninth are both good examples. Uh, traffic flows on those streets and there's limited commercial. We keep talking about that when we build new streets, that's a good location for uh, commercial. I would tell you, Jardot is a good street for not commercial and there's limited commercial in the neighborhood area on 9th. Perkins Road is a good example of commercial and congestion and lack of safety for drivers. I wish that uh, uh, 12th Street needs to move traffic safely with a limited uh, curb cuts. I, not the neighborhood group, but I as an individual, wish we had the people and the charge to look at a larger area, maybe from Duck to Washington, from 12th to 9th. Maybe from uh, Willis to Western, from 12th to 9th. If you look at all of these areas and the things that come to for you, people are asking for change. There was quite a lot of discussion about what uh, the uh, neighbor, uh, the thing that came to for the request that came before you on Duck Street across from the library about the, glonic, the zoning classification and what you could do with it. We need to look at north-south connectors we need to look at a traffic light. We need to look in, uh, at crosswalks. All would be desirable. We are still excited about the 12th Street overlay and its great potential. If you do not postpone the meeting, I ask you to vote for the 12th Street overlay. Help us help this neighborhood. Thank you very much.
Okay, I believe that's all the speakers from the neighborhood group at the moment for, okay. A um, couple of things about this option one, uh, the neighborhood proposal. Within the study area, this proposal does amend the comp plan by indicating low density over the area identified as neighborhood overlay, and it would amend the comp plan to indicate commercial over the area identified as mixed use overlay. The proposal also establishes the textual requirements for those overlay districts, and those were included in your packet. Um, the strike through on those textual requirements indicated that the neighborhood, they took our original that the plan commission had seen back in May. The strike through is their suggestion to strike, and the underline is their suggestion to add to the text that you had before you. Um, the two, two points, again, the study area, that is what has been um, noticed and met statutory requirements throughout the entire process. The expanded area, as was alluded to by one of the speakers, um, that would require um, direction by council for staff to uh, go back and um, work the expand, greatly expanded area through the process because it does not meet the statutory notice requirements at this time because the focus was on the study area itself. Any questions before I move on to other options? So if we were to vote for option one, it would go to council and then council would have to remand it to you. Uh, I have a solution for that as, as we get through uh, to the alternatives. Yes. Were there anything else before I move on? Well, what I heard from two speakers was they'd like to have this tabled. And what my, they didn't say directly, but the reference was they had never seen this map. So have you, has the neighborhood seen this map and are the strikeout and ads, have they seen that? And do they agree to that or do you know? This, this map that's before you right now is um, what staff created based on the map that was provided to us from the neighborhood committee. Okay. The textual component that has the strike throughs and the underlines that also was provided to us from the neighborhood committee. So it's, they're, they're the end result of their work that has occurred. Thank you. Yes. Okay, option two, you have seen this option before. This option amends the comp plan by indicating low density over the area identified as conservation overlay, which is on this map identified in the purple. And it would amend the comp plan to indicate commercial over the area identified as mixed use overlay, which is referenced on the blue. Again, it does not address any of the properties on the south side of 12th Avenue. The proposal um, also establishes the textual requirements for the overlay districts. Those um, were, they had not changed from what you had recommended to the Planning Commission, I mean to, excuse me, to the City Council in May. So it was included in the, the large City Council attachment in your report. Um, again, Paula, is this, yes. Is this basically what we recommended? Is this is this is the proposal that was recommended from the Planning Commission to the City Council that the City Council remanded back with those um, those directions. Thank you. Yes. Okay, maps are going to change a little bit because these reflect the overlay considerations and how the changes would occur on these subject properties, not all of the properties within the study area. Option three, and this was developed from staff from um, all of the input meetings that we had. Option three is to amend 
the uh, comprehensive plan to indicate commercial on the lots that are fronting on 12th Avenue. There are blue, those in blue are indicated as public. They are already developed in public form and fashion, so they would be out of compliance completely and would not be affected by um, the red, which is the commercial. On the south side, between Blakely and Walnut, that is no change to how the um, properties are in the land use plan currently. So they are currently identified as commercial. The effective change, what this map indicates, is those on the north side of 12th Avenue, um, that front 12th only, being indicated as commercial. There are no overlays proposed with this option, nor does this option rezone any properties. It just indicates under the future land use for any, any individual owner coming in seeking a zoning amendment to a map amendment to their property, it would indicate these properties as commercial. And the final option that is developed is for there to be no amendment to the comprehensive plan, no amendment to the zoning regulations, therefore no properties are rezoned, there are no overlay districts applied. In other words, everything stays the way it is now. In that regard, anyone coming in seeking a map amendment, um, it would be evaluated against the comprehensive plan, which this would be the future land use plan out of the comprehensive plan as it exists, and um, the zoning that um, is applied to the current zoning districts around on the properties. Any questions on the, these four options that we have? Under option number three, Yes. How, how do you address the previous comments about 12th Street and having commercial available on north side and driveways and traffic? Is it the city of Stillwater's position that 12th Street should not have those or is it okay to have those? We do have current regulations that dictate um, where driveways can be placed spacing wise um, and along the type of street or the functional classification of a street. So those regulations would apply to any of these lots no matter what their, um, what their land use indication is. Um, residential driveways are different from commercial driveways. The rules are different for residential and commercial driveways. That is more in line with the zoning of the property and how it's actually used, as opposed to what the guide is as indicated on this map, the future land use. Okay, thank you. Yes, any other questions before I move on to findings? Okay, the findings. And there are a number of these, so bear with me. A uh, planning process was conducted to consider a possible change to the comprehensive plan for an area along West 12th Avenue. Within the study area, commercial development has occurred along the south side of 12th Avenue, and that was also mentioned already this evening. Through a variety of means to collect public input, a desire to preserve and enhance the neighborhood was found. It was vocalized all of the data that we had collected and um, even through to uh, the presentations this evening. Overlay districts may be used to accomplish the neighborhood concerns and to allow for appropriate development. The neighborhood conservation overlay district would establish low density residential development as the use that was allowed for in a specified area. The neighborhood mixed use overlay district would establish a mixture of uses complementary to the residential neighborhood and with specific design criteria for buildings and site development for a specified area. Option one would apply the neighborhood conservation overlay 
and the neighborhood mixed use overlay to identified properties. It would establish criteria for the overlay districts as presented from the neighborhood. Option two would apply the neighborhood conservation overlay district and the neighborhood mixed use overlay district to other identified properties and we establish criteria for the overlay districts. Again, this is the one that was recommended by the Planning Commission and remanded back from the City Council. Option three would apply future land use of commercial to only those properties fronting on 12th Avenue on the north side of 12th and within the study area. Option four would make no changes, no amendments to the land use plan in the comprehensive plan no um, overlay de designations and no changes to the zoning requirements. And then finally, overlay districts can encourage appropriate development opportunities and themes. Any questions? I know this, realize this is a lot of information put before you this evening. Okay, I will be back. <laughs> so we will now open the public hearing. Uh, because we're not looking at one particular issue here, but several options, instead of asking for speakers for and against, we're just gonna ask you to come forward um, and speak on the topic in whichever way you would like. Um, but I'll ask you to state your name and your address and also whether you live within the study area or the notification area or outside. Public hearing is open. Hi, I'm Diane Lowe. I live at near the corner of 10th at McFarland, which is outside the major study area, but it is just east of Willis, so I'm, I'm a little confused on how many areas that uh, has. Um, I would like to just, I don't have all the objective data, although that was very impressive to me, um, and I agree with it from the neighborhood. Subjectively, um, I am not for commercial use north of 12th Street for the reasons that they said as far as um, the use of 12th as a main arterial. Uh, also because the bike lanes are on that side and there's enough you know, stops at the driveways, the streets as it is, and if there's a lot of commercial input there, it's gonna interrupt the bikeway. Um, also, mainly, I object to <laughs> I object to the types of commercial buildings on the south side of, of 12th because um, I think they are too close to the road. There is no green separation as there are in other places. Now the one I was looking at is the county administration building and it's right there on this, on this sidewalk, which is okay because it's in that area. But other places that are near neighborhoods, I think they should have more trees and setbacks um, as in um, on Walnut Street. Um, there's a small um, office building west of the <coughs> drugstores and it is set back. It's it's a uh, parking lot is set back, and then there's the building, and there are bushes at least there, so it's not like right up there. The several of the buildings that are built on the south side of 12 are they just seem overwhelming. They just seem like overlaying the street. There's no. It's not. Um, it doesn't seem sensible but it's not aesthetic either. Um, it just seems they could have done better on that. So especially if they do that on the north side of 12th, I think that's a big bad part. Um, but anyway, that's my input. Thank you very much.
My name is Michael Oliver. I live at 1123 South Gray Street, which fronts 12th Street and is in the study area. I would recommend that you vote for option one since that is the recommendation of the neighborhood residents. The city exists and should serve the residents of the community, not business interests. As residents also operate the business. But without the residents, the business does not succeed. Um, again, to reiterate that the commercial development south of 12th Street that is across the street from Walnut is empty. So we don't see that there is a need for further commercial development since what has been developed has not been filled. I think it's important to preserve the existing affordable housing that is north of 12th Street, which would not be accomplished by allowing commercial development. It would lower the desirability of living in that area, and I believe it would <coughs> lead to its decline. So I would recommend voting for option one, which was the input of the residents, which the city council would have directed us to input. Thank you. My name is Julie Couch. I live at 901 South Gray. Uh, we were quite surprised when we received the news that there were four options. I went back and looked at the May 15th meeting and the council remanded the one option back to, to, to the Planning Commission and we were supposed to amend it. That's what we did. I, we do not know where these other two <coughs> options, how they could have added, been added to this. So uh, I really think there should only be the neighborhood option and the no change option. Thank you. I'm Shirley Weeks. I do not live in the study area. I've been uh, active in- Can you state in, your address? Uh, what? Can you state your address for the record? Uh, 71 University Circle, same as when I was here before. Uh, this is a, I wish, I, I, I usually speak from written statements. Uh, I think that all of Paula's uh, presentation came as a surprise to us. Uh, we, we've, we've worked with the staff and uh, that was the first time that we'd seen a lot of that. The map that we were working with last week doesn't look anything like this map and this one is much improved I want, I want to tell you. We had no idea that we were going to uh, by presenting these other options, we're going back to where we started before we had all of those meetings. And then it came to you, it came to the Planning Commission, and we simplified all of that. I don't know how all of these options have reappeared in front of you. It's confusing to me. I think it's a surprise and confusing to a lot of people in our neighborhood. I would ask you to support what the City Council asked us to do, is preter uh, preserve and protect this neighborhood for people to be able to live there. People that work at the hospital live there, people that work in the, the university. We've had several young people that have told us it's one of the few places they could afford to buy a house. I would urge you to go with the overlay. If, if not, go with no change. Please do not, I have not ever heard anyone say that we should do, do all of those blocks commercial, all those lots commercial, as we talked about in one of the plans. Thank you very much. Can I ask a question? You've mentioned that you had a problem with the maps, that they <coughs> were not accurate. Can you summarize what the, the, uh, the, the, the map that we had at our, our group last week had uh, didn't look anything like that. And I don't know if the planning staff just drew that map up for us to look at or Which one? Uh, the map that we we had at our that had a lot of different colors it didn't have the clarity of this map there was one section we couldn't understand it had a whole lot of green on there and uh, it was just not a it was just not this map so I think there is a confusion about the map I'm not a good map reader 
Uh, so I don't look at them. I go to a street map and look at them. Now I know you're planning specialists, so you look at for other things. But there are little things like uh, it shows 12th Street uh, just making a curve down there, and and uh, the, the, it it doesn't look like that. So I just think it's very hard to follow this. But I would ask you to do what the council asked us to do, is for the neighborhood to do an overlay. And they didn't say, and put back all these other considerations before us. Thank you. John Pollock, 1106 South Adams. This is going to be real short and sweet. Um, whatever happens, we would like to see commercials kept out of the north side of 12th Street because we're afraid that if it ever starts, it'll set a precedence and it'll lead to the deterioration <coughs> of the neighborhood. And anyway, that's it. Thanks. Let me ask you a question. That option number one map yes, sir. that's up there right now. Yes, sir. What I've heard is your neighborhood, what I've heard is some of the people in the neighborhood want us to table this. Is that map sufficient in your mind for us to make an action tonight or do you want us to table it so you can review that map? That map accurately defines the area that we set out. Where a lot of the confusion came up is the map we were given prior to this meeting was I, way I, different. I, I, I can relate to that. I am asking whether you're still asking for us to table it or if we go with option number one, is, is that map sufficient for us to proceed? Are you, do, are you still asking us to table this? We think that right now, although it's, it's, we think it could be better, the map for option one is good enough for you to make a decision on. The other maps, we still think there's some confusion. Does that, does that answer your question? That correct? answers my question. Okay. I, I do have a, a comment. I think you made the statement that you didn't want to see any commercial north of 12th. But with this option one in the mixed use area along Washington, potentially that could have commercial uses. Yes, and, and in that, that's the one area that we thought it would fit, but not in the brown area. Okay, I just wanted to get a clarification sure. from you yeah, on that. I understand. Anything else? Thank you. I'm Elaine Courtright. I live at 2208 West 11th. I am not in the area of study. Uh, I was not aware that we were going to be able to speak tonight, so I don't have prepared remarks, and I will try to um, do the best I can. Um, I'll have to admit that uh, at first, when I started reading about this, I thought, well, that's not my neighborhood. And, and what piqued my interest was that there's been increased um, zoning requests for office in my neighborhood and then I started looking at the bigger picture and looking at the traffic congestion um, and looking at what the purpose for 12th was and I'm reading from the news press November 25th 2009 Stillwater officials opened West 12th on Tuesday this 5.4 million dollar project should take some of the traffic pressure off West 6th Avenue the new section of four lane road starts at Western and West of Water and ends on deck. The revamped 12th Avenue is more than a street project. It includes sidewalks that run the length of the street, a bike path, a new bridge, and storm drain system. It should reduce flooding in the area. I have concerns about development on 12th due to flooding. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, I lived at 1109 South Orchard, and then I moved to 802 South Gray. Then I moved out to the country for a period of time. And when I specifically moved back into town 11 years ago to 11th and Ridge, it was because the neighborhood was an appealing, affordable neighborhood that I planned to be able to retire in. 
But I, I've been in Stillwater long enough, I remember 12th being straightened out and why it was straightened out and why it was improved. And I remember flooding on 12th. And I feel that with the insistence on wanting to zone the north side of 12th to office, which provides no revenue to the city for um, these infrastructure costs. Um, you know, I, I question that it's wise that, that you'll be able to pass more bond issues for road improvement projects if people consistently see that, you know, we're, we're passing bond. I mean, I voted. I voted for the issue. I voted for a lot of these issues because I was all for progress in still water and let's get those let's get those roads built but then when we turn right around and congest them you know, congest them I'm asking how you know how many miles out is the, is is the average driver going to have to drive to get into work what will they what will those drivers on on 12th and on western be willing to put up with they're they're going to start being squeaky wheels and as I say, I didn't have prepared remarks. Um, I'll stop at that and trust your good judgment. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Eddie Watkins. I live at 1123 Westwood Drive. But uh, I am one of the owners of the property at uh, 1220 West 12th Street. <laughs> and I feel like we've kind of kicked a skunk here uh, <laughs> because uh, what we had in mind with that empty lot is a lot like what uh, you see at Allen's Pharmacy, uh, Cockrell Eye Clinic, right across from the Warren Clinic. It, it, those buildings were set in a neighborhood and I don't think they've really what I would say interrupted the neighborhood they've been a service to the people who come out of the medical clinic and uh, you know need a service of like a drugstore and that's one of the tenants that we have wanting to move in there is a drugstore uh, and our other idea was to put offices in there medical offices could be a dental office if somebody was interested, maybe an insurance office. We're not trying to open up restaurants or bars or anything like that. It was strictly office, and that was our whole intent. And one of the things I would like to say is, and I don't have the statistics. It came out in the newspaper, and perhaps you can get them from Paula. But they sent out, I think they said around 1,700 questionnaires to the people that live in that area. And they got about, I think, 76 responses. Is that close, Paula, to when you sent out those cards? Anyway, I know I own property down on Washington Street. And I got a letter saying the Lambda Chi fraternity wanted to do something to move closer to the street. And they had meetings. And I didn't attend them because I didn't care. You know, I just didn't care what happened at the Lambda Chi House. Well, they sent out 1,700 or approximately postcards to people, and they got 76 responses. Well, I kind of contend that there's probably about 15, 1,600 people who don't care. You have a, a vocal, small group in the neighborhood here, and they're, you know, saying they don't want it. But, you know, it's a little bit funny, too, is that I know I own property in that neighborhood. Uh, we own the house at 1124 South Adams. We you know, it's a rental house. Uh, my partner, Mike Ebert, owns a piece of property, and we've never been invited to the neighborhood meetings. So it's, you know, to have our input. And I know also <laughs> we've been before the commission twice, and both times we had a 5-0 vote in our favor of doing uh, what we want to do and the second time we had a 6-0 vote which you know you voted in favor of what we wanted to do so we still would like to develop that and we don't want to you know like say put restaurants or anything else 
there is a gentleman who has drugs wants a drugstore put in there and then the rest of it would be office so I thank you for your consideration John Pollock, 6 South Adams um, Mr. Watkins probably doesn't know that but I personally invited Mr. Ebert to come to our meetings and he declined Anyone else who would like to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I have a letter to read into the record. This is from property owners Dale and Susan Higginbotham at 1103 South Adams Street. We recently purchased the property at 1103 South Adams Street for our daughter, who is currently a student at OSU. We purchased in this area of town because it is quiet and has a great neighborhood feel. Our house was originally built on the north side of campus in 1938, and it was part of a community of houses that were built for returning World War II veterans. It was moved to Adams Street during the development of the campus north of the Boone Pickens Stadium. We have invested approximately 80000 in improvements to the property while maintaining the historic value of the house and the integrity of the neighborhood. This area of town has a nice balance of owner residence and rental properties. It is close to campus without being in the heart of the party area. It is a quiet and safe area unlike the neighborhoods that have a mixture of party houses or commercial properties. Both my husband and I attended OSU as did many of our family. My grandfather wrestled for OSU. My great grandparents owned the property on the northeast corner of McElroy and Perkins Road. We have a personal interest in maintaining the beauty of Stillwater the community would best be served by maintaining the residential zoning for the area of West 12th Avenue. Okay. So I will now close the public hearing and ask for staff's recommendations. Okay, before I get into the alternatives that are available to you, just like to clarify a couple of things, and I'm going to back up. Um, this is the land use map as the land use currently exists uh, for the study area and the areas around. In the, the maps and, and the, some of the confusion that we heard um, tonight and then at the neighborhood meeting that we went to last week, um, part of this, we used this as the base at that time because we heard some confusion that's why staff attempted to help with some new maps those that have removed the current land use so that that the planning commission could actually see the properties impacted and affected and the manner in which the neighborhood's proposal and then the remanded um, the proposal were on those properties and in totality in in the geographic area of them so we thought that it had helped alleviate some of the confusion um, based on the concerns that we had heard another concern that we heard is uh, the 12th Avenue and um, as discussed at the neighborhood meeting when property is platted right-of-way is dedicated but when the city of Stillwater acquires property, we do not have to dedicate property or make that dedication to ourselves in order to install a street or any other form of infrastructure. Therefore, if you look, if you can see where my arrow is hovering, it looks like the right of way of 12th Avenue just stops right there when in essence, this line that is continuing on, that is uh, part of 12th Avenue. The reason it bisects these blue parcels is those are actual legal existing parcels owned by the city of Stillwater upon which the street crosses. So that's why we believed that that was what was vocalized as part of the confusion in the mapping. And there, there could be other issues of confusion. There's a lot of color in here. Um, and that's again another reason that we tried to remove it from the neighborhoods option and the remanded option so that the Planning Commission could see um, what all was being affected. Oh, I have a question. 
Yes, sir. You go back. <clears throat> so the red area that is on the far east side that's in the study area, that area right there. Yes, sir. As I read the neighborhood's recommendation, that's within the green area. That is a portion of, yes, all of that red is within their green area proposed, correct. So if we go with that, that area is compliant if we make it green. Just that minimal depth of the properties on, of these two parcels on 12th Avenue okay. because currently the indicated commercial does not cover the entire parcels as the neighborhood's proposal does. Yes, but I'm most concerned I don't want to take a red area which is a commercial area and make it a neighborhood overlay area. I don't want to do that. I, I want to make sure the green covers that area in my interpretation of the map it does. There, there would be no change to these portions of these lots okay if you went with option one that is correct thank you yes any other questions before i move to alternatives okay um paula since there was some confusion about where option three came from can you talk to us about how that was developed yes option three um actually um came from um, public input that was received throughout the planning process between January and May. One of the reasons that we brought back all of these options to the Planning Commission is that there had been no action taken to deny or outright reject any of the options that were brought before Planning Commission or the City Council. Mm -hmm. um, it gives more of a basis for why these options are prepared when you have all of the history um, that goes along with it. And this has been a um, lengthy, um, for, for this small area, um, it's been a fairly lengthy process, not, not because of how much, let me back up, more because of how many influences have been, starting with a single property rezoning request and moving into um, denied, reconsidered, postponed planning process, recommendation, remand, neighborhood more strongly involved to this point. Okay, does that answer? All right. Okay, so alternatives. Bear with me because there are many alternatives, and um, this will address one of the very earliest questions from the Planning Commission. And these are abbreviated on the screen. You have them outlined in your reports. So alternative one, find that the comprehensive plan for the area does need adjustment. The proposed text amendment is needed, and recommend the City Council approve option one and approve the proposed text amendment establishing the Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District and the Neighborhood Mixed Use Overlay District as presented within the study area. What this does, it will respond directly to the direction provided by the council when they remanded the 12th Avenue plan in May, which was narrow uses in the mixed use overlay and expand the geographical area of the conservation overlay. Alternative two, Find that the comp plan needs adjustment, that the proposed text amendment is needed, and recommend that the City Council direct staff to begin the process to apply the Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District and the Neighborhood Mixed Use Overlay District to the expanded area. That would be all of the area in brown and green on the option one map outside of the study area. That would require notification and that would require beginning the notification planning commission and city council process over in essence unless um, you focus just entirely on the study area tonight and that recommendation that you sent to council could be select option one within the study area direct staff to prepare for the greatly expanded area. 
option three or alternative she responded three. exactly to my question <laughs> Read your mind. I will reserve comment <laughs> alternative three find that the comprehensive plan for the area needs adjustment that the proposed text amendment is needed and recommend that the City Council approve option two and approve the proposed text amendment establishing the Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District and the Neighborhood Mixed Use Overlay District as presented within the study area. What this option does is it is the one that was recommended by the Planning Commission to the City Council and remanded back to the Planning Commission from the City Council in May. Alternative four. Find that the comprehensive plan for the area needs adjustment and recommend that the City Council approve option three to extend commercial uses to only those lots fronting onto 12th Avenue within the study area. What this does is it only will change the land use plan to indicate commercial on those lots um, fronting 12th Avenue. It will not rezone them. It will not apply any overlay district designation. Alternative five, find that the comprehensive plan for the area does not need adjustment. However, find that the neighborhood conservation overlay district is needed and recommend city council approve the proposed text amendment establishing the neighborhood conservation overlay district as presented within the study area. What this will do is it will apply the neighborhood conservation overlay district to the study area, but it will not amend the land use plan, the future land use will remain the same. Does that make sense? It doesn't do anything with the mixed use overlay. It only applies the conservation overlay district to the study area. Is that the conservation overlay district as proposed by the neighborhood or as proposed by the plan that was remanded to? The, the intent is that that was proposed by the neighborhood because of the, um, the, the word that came through all of the studies, all of the um, responses was preservation of the neighborhood on the north side of 12th. All right, uh, uh, alternative six. Find that no changes are needed to the comprehensive plan, no changes are needed to city code, recommend that the City Council take no action to amend the C3 plan or the zoning regulations, therefore recommend option four. What this does, it will continue the current process. Individual rezoning applications will be reviewed per the comp plan and the requested zoning district change. The future land use will remain the same. No overlay districts will be applied. No properties will be rezoned. So it will continue as it is today. And finally, option or alternative seven. Find that amendments are needed to the comprehensive plan and or to the zoning regulations. Recommend that the city council approve specifically identified amendments within the study area. What this allows is for the planning commission to identify any amendments needed outside of what has been presented before you this evening. Identify any amendments needed to the comprehensive plan or to the zoning and or to the zoning regulations and that could be a recommendation but they would have to be specifically identified any questions I have no questions <laughs> again a lot of information um, we appreciate your patience we certainly appreciate the involvement of the neighborhood um, I'll reiterate again what we saw um, prior to the, the May meetings was that um, there was a lot of differencing, uh, differences of opinions um, amongst the property owners and uh, residents in the neighborhood. But through the process from January to May, and we've even seen it the few times we've been involved since May, um, the neighborhoods have gotten to know each other. They have started doing things together, being more involved with each other and seeing themselves, from my perspective, seeing themselves more as a neighborhood um, as opposed to just folks who live in an area of town. 
and we think that's one of the greatest positives that can come out of any planning process. I will be happy to answer any questions you have. No? Okay, is there a map that you would like for me to put back up on the screen? Uh, the option, I would like to see option number one back up on the screen, please. Does anybody object to that? Nope, that's what I would like to I like this option. Uh, my preference is to take action tonight. My preference would be to, if legal agrees it's legal, is to go with alter the recommendation number one and two, alternate number one and two. In other words, the area inside the study area, I want to recommend the city council, they go forward and do the overlay district and get that done. The area outside the study area that's within the neighborhood study area that they direct the staff to start the process on that because I've driven through the neighborhood quite a bit and I I concur with the boundaries they look appropriate to me and it looks like a good plan outside that area well my thoughts I, I think with the council remanding this back to us, the intent was to grow the area that would be affected by the overlay district. I get that, don't disagree with that. Uh, I, I do have some concerns if we are going to grow this area, a lot of folks haven't been notified. And, and I, I heard what you said, Mike, the, the part that in the study area, everyone hasn't been notified. On that point, I don't know that I'm completely comfortable with the neighborhoods, I guess the lack of mixed use in the study area. All we have is a small bit along Washington. Personally, I would like to see maybe, obviously not commercial, full-blown commercial along, uh, along 12th, but maybe some more mixed use than what we're seeing in the, in, in the study area. So I'm not totally comfortable with, with what you were saying and going ahead and accepting that a, as it is right at the moment. Uh, again, I do like the big area, appreciate everybody's input, and I think I could get behind it if, if that is the will of the folks there and everybody. But I don't, I don't I'm not real comfortable yet with, with the, the mixed use board. So. I'll try to interpret your statement. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so if we do option number one, we put that back up on the screen. We're talking about taking the green and maybe taking it two lots on the north side, 12th Street, all the way along there. Is that what you're saying? Uh, maybe, yeah. I think I think I could get behind more mixed use now. I don't know that it has to be all the way along 12th. Maybe there's some logical places in there that would would work better rather than just blanket, you know, two lots back the whole way. But I just feel like we need a little more option for mixed use. Definitely in the overall, but even specifically in in the study area. Personal opinion. I I like the idea of maybe expanding the mixed use along the north side of 12th just because that overlay district as we looked at it before did have design requirements and we heard some people saying they were concerned about development looking a particular way not fitting with the neighborhood um, so it wouldn't be rezoning anything or changing the c3 plan particularly but just allowing for consideration of mixed use along 12th where there is obviously some interest in use other than residential. Well, say something or can I say no, something? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> My concern is this. If we, uh, north of 12th Street seems to have a certain character in my mind. And that character with the wide sidewalk and stuff is a residential character to me. And yes, the developer or potential developer had some things that 
sounded great, but I've been on the Planning Commission side, I've been on the city side, and how do you make sure you got that development versus a restaurant, versus a bar, versus things that we don't desire? Um, you know, do you have a PUD or is are this required? I my my reaction is we got development south of 12th Street, which is commercial development, and it's it's not filled in yet. And to me, at this particular time, I'm thinking that north of 12th Street needs to remain residential. We got other areas in the city they can they can move to. I agree. No, no clapping, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it for your benefit. I'm doing it because that's my personal opinion at this time. Do you want to see any of the other maps? Do you have any other maps? I, <coughs> the, the, whatever the option that has that red on it, and I personally don't like red, but uh, it shows several areas north of 12th Street, which goes all along that area. Um, I might bring this point up, Mike. You know, the bottom map right there, that's what we basically have all approved. Yes. Uh, last go around. I think, I think we need to be somewhere in between with the mixed use, what's on the bottom, what we approved last time, make a concession there to have more of an overlay district. But also with that, I think we need more mixed use. So but what? it needs to be something in between, in my opinion. Why, why is it important to you to have the commercial north of 12th? Well, and it's a mixed use commercial, which that would have regulations on it. And, and I, didn't we establish in the requirements of the mixed use overlay that certain uses would be permitted? And that's, that's correct. And, and to answer your question, Zell, everybody may disagree with me, but that's still a major road across our town mm. that we all spent lots of money on. And uh, I, think, I, think it could, I think some well-planned mixed use would be advantageous along the street and not be a detriment to traffic. <coughs> okay. That's my answer. I, I kind of wish that more residents had come forward about it. How many, how many people here actually own the properties within the observation area? So that's four owners out of how many? About 1,700 notifications sent out. No. Oh, there's not that many in that area. That was for the entire area. All right. There's, there's, um, there's about 1,700. But I agree with that too, Zell. I think there's some apathy going on there. You know, you'd like to see more input, whichever way. I, you know? I would like to vote for the for the people, but I don't feel like the people is very well represented. I'm torn. <laughs> You've addressed a concern that's been, I've been working in this area for over 40 years, and it's the same exact thing. So... How you get that, I, I haven't figured that one out. I haven't either, Mike. So I've concluded my mind. We contacted 1,700 households, sent out 1,700 plus or minus. Cause, um, and they included people in this area, people outside this area. And w we have several people for option number one half a dozen, which is several to me, and lots of people did not come tonight and did not address their opinion. 
So I conclude in my mind they don't object to option number one. Well, that's right or not, I don't know, but <laughs> that's my conclusion in my mind. <laughs> so do you have a proposal or do you want to table this? Do you want to take option number one and expand the green somewhere? I mean, I would I would be okay with with option one expand and if we, we expanded the green to whichever. Um, what if I'm trying to kind of look at these two maps together? Mm -hmm. So, in the bottom map, the mixed use overlay is in the blue. What if we extended the green along 12th just to the end of where that proposed mixed use overlay ended? Yeah, kind of half of it, half. Of it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And we kind of, we kind of, when we, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Please point to the map, and then we will make sure everyone in the audience understands, because I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, so this is, I guess, the plan that was remanded from the council. That is mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Um, and we've got sort of this area that we had proposed as mixed use. Correct. Um, so what if we extended this green to maybe properties along 12th just to the end of this proposed mixed use over there? I could get behind that. Now, which properties? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, that's the that next question. Yeah. I, I like the east-west component of that because if y'all recall when we when we adjusted that line there was kind of a logical place right there I think there was an open track of land mm -hmm. and that was kind of where we drew our, our, our line there between the conservation and so now how far off of 12th we go I'm open So, well, that way, so people can see it. <laughs> here, we can put it right here. My proposal is the area in red east of Jefferson. Which is here. Here. In other words, everything that's in shaded in red east mm -hmm. of Jefferson, which is. That direction, right? Yeah. <laughs> Would be green. Would be okay, in the so this mixed right use. Which one is that? Which number is that? Oh, would be green on that map. Would be green on this map. So, you're so let, me, let me have the map here. Exactly. This is option. So we would go so option number four. Except I've got this lot of these. I know I'm out of my lot. <laughs> So you see this area in red right here? That would turn to green. So your green covers this area right here. So we would expand that parcel, that parcel, and that parcel and make it green. The only other thing that I think might be green is this parcel right here because it's got public on both sides. And then If we could pop the map up, please. I thought we're talking about taking it over to where it was over to Blakely. So it would be to right here. I would, I, would, I would go that far, but this to me is in the neighborhood area and I think splits up the neighborhood. So I would go to Adams and everything. East of Adams, I would go with that is in red turns to green, which it's already this but is already green, and they're proposed. This correct. area is green up to that point, right? right. So green, but these parts green. are not green, this right? Yeah, but these would turn to green, that would turn to green, that would turn to green. Okay. 
I have the GIS pulled up on the screen if we would like to discuss this so that the audience. address maybe off the GIS uh, yeah all the addresses are up here so if y'all would just want to well I'm <laughs> it's good enough to read no, that I can't I can read that, that either <laughs> <laughs> I will zoom in let's start at Washington between 11th and 12th how's that okay this parcel is 1102 so 1102 would be green. Green. Mm -hmm. yep. Mixed use. Uh, Mixed use. Washington? Yes, 1102 South Washington. This parcel is 998. That would be green, and the parcel immediately north of it would be green. 905. Not according to that map, but according to the neighborhood map it would be green <laughs> see see how we're doing this math <laughs> 905 west 11th 998 west 12th 905 west 11th then the next parcel to the west the south Nine, parcel the south parcel has the same address of 998 and that would be green Mixed use. Mixed use. Nine, nine, eight, West 12. West 12. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> You're holding something back from us, were you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll kind of hold it in between here, guys. Right. 998 West 12. 999 West 12. Yes. Is that, or is that? That one was right. Yeah, that that would that would turn to green. Yep. Right. All right. And I guess that would be a eleven twenty nine uh, South Jefferson. Yes, and the eleven oh two that may actually be a yeah that's going to be South Washington. South Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And eleven twenty nine South Jefferson. Anything else north of it along Jefferson? No, I don't think so. Oh. Address. I think that first 998 yeah. is actually 998 West 12. Because it doesn't it face 12? Right here. I don't know why both of those are 998. Yeah, one can be 12 and one can be Washington. There's a 998 West 12. One of those. The only list. There's a 998 West 12 and a 998 South Washington. Yeah, so the one next to Washington would so be the Washington address, and then the one by 12 would be the. Then that doesn't, that doesn't front Washington at all. No. That 998 there doesn't. So can you draw on that map? I'm not understanding. That track. <laughs> I do not believe so because it's a viewer only. Okay. So, get back up to that location, and I'm saying within the block between Jefferson and Washington, north of 12th Street, it is all mixed use except for the three parcels that are immediately east of Jefferson to the north. So the block bound by 11th, Washington, 12th, and Jefferson, the entire block is mixed use except Those. 1101, 1109, 
and 1119. That is correct. Those, those three individual lots. That is correct. Okay. And then going immediately west of Jefferson. So the block bound by 11th, Jefferson, 12th, and Adams. Okay. Yep. Uh, immediately north of 12th Street on this side there. That's public property. In that parcel right there, I'm thinking ought to be mixed use. Mm -hmm. 1120 is the address. Yes. South Jefferson, right? South Jefferson. 1120 South Jefferson. Yeah. 1106. Yeah, that was the last one, I think. Point out 1106. 1106 is the large parcel that runs along South Jefferson. That's this piece. I don't think we were going to make it. That one right there. So this part Oh, no, it, sorry. That's in blue on this map. Yeah, the city owns it. That is, that well, is public. I was pointing at this one. But public. you guys are talking about the, this one. I thought that no, I'm talking about the one in between those two you're pointing. Well, that's because, 1120. Yeah. John was asking about 1106, and both of these are labeled as 1106. Yeah, but they're both public. They're both public. They're both public. Oh, yeah. these are both they're public. both blue. There's so moving more immediately north, moving north is 1001, and that's this one at the intersection of 11th and Jefferson. 1001 remains residential. Yeah, because it's across from the ones we took out. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So we have two that front only on 11th Avenue, and then the remainder will front on Adams. So the, the two that front on 11th. Two that front on 11th remain residential. Yep. So the only property we're considering is immediately east of Adams, the far southern property. That one. That one right there. 1121 South Adams. Yes. And that's where I would stop. I can, I can, I can for, yeah. Okay, so two parcels only in the block bound by 11th, Jefferson, 12th, and Adams. That is correct. That's the number I came up with in my head also. Okay, and the entire block bound by 11th, Washington, 12th, and Jefferson, excluding the 1101, 1109, and 1119, which are the northwesternmost parcels. Yes. Okay. That's true, John. Mm. Yeah. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that'd get his attention. Can <laughs> you please verify as I have attached the I concur with what you have hatched. Look at that. I can see. Okay. Could we give the neighborhood a moment to take a look at it? Yes. Sure. Um, is it appropriate if the neighborhood wants to say something based upon this that we can allow them? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Let's come up to the, yeah, come up to the mic. Yeah. 
would like. Don't do what I did. Please come up to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Without getting into specifics, let's suppose that you have included a lot that fronts 12th on the north side, and the person that owns that lot owns adjacent lots north of it with plans to combine them. If the overlay is established and only the one lot is in the mixed use overlay and the other stay in the conservation overlay, will that prevent him from making one big lot and putting in one big building? I don't know. Uh, I, I can tell you my opinion, but why don't we have legal or Paula respond to that? I, if it's in the if you have this discrepancy, if, if you have different zoning classifications, wherever the zoning line is, that's where that use stops. Okay. So you can't build a big building and try to change the use at that point. And, and, and my, my comment was going to, to go along with what um, City Attorney Dorman said. For instance, if 1119, which was not included right. in the mixed use portion that the planning commissioners are discussing, if it was purchased by the owner of 1129, that is included. The mixed use component is only applying to the property labeled 1129 in effect at the time that the mixed use is applied. It would be a rezoning <coughs> to take it to include any other properties. So there would be some public process that would need to be done with notice, hearing, et cetera. To so it could legally properties. be done, but it has to go through a substantial process with notice to do that. That is correct, and it would require planning commission and city council action. Okay, so it's not we're not eliminating from occurring, but we're saying they got to go through a substantial process for that to occur. Can you approach? I'm sorry, you're the chair. <laughs> <laughs> all these, co I just want to comment. All these comments about the few people here. Over the course of these meetings, I'll bet we've had 60 people from the neighborhood. And you're never going to get a big, big group in something like this. But we've had great participation. And overall, practically everyone was for keeping the neighborhood as is. And I believe, didn't they tell us in the Westwood overlay, it was about five or six people that developed that. Think about how big that area is. Anyone else like to respond to the amended plan? like to make a motion in uh, so I think we've got the recommendation number one down do we want to go with recommendation number two or alternative number two which is do we want as a plan commission uh, recommend that we start the process outside of that area can we do that without notification it's got that, that, would be the process. that would be the process we would they would have to be notified and everything else I mean I'm okay with that I, okay I don't disagree with the overall size of it. so I will make a motion you actually might want to go back and look at item number seven because you can So I'm looking at item number seven, okay. and it's not mind. registering in my mind what I should say. Option, option, uh, or excuse me, alternative number seven is not 
one of the specific option one, two, three, or four as presented. Option, or excuse me, alternative seven allows the planning commission to identify specific properties within the study area for something to be applied to, so, which I believe is what you have done. Can we combine that with option two? Yes. So I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> we find that amendments are needed for the comprehensive plan and for the zoning regulations and recommend Senate approve the specifically identified amendments as previously discussed over the last few minutes. City Attorney, is that motion so far legally sufficient for you and Paula to do your thing? We need, uh, I think that we maybe need to step back. I think that we were looking at option one, which is kind of the basis for this with the five with the following amendments, and that is to add Six certain <coughs> add mixed use overlay to these additional so my mo properties. So my motion before you told me to look at seven was <laughs> going to be. <laughs> I, I, never mind. I think Paul and I are having a, dis having a disagreement about which way will this will go the best. But so so let me let me let me describe through discussion what I'm thinking the motion might be. <laughs> Well, I, if I understood you earlier. The motion was that you would that you would option number one was the, was the base base that you would recommend that, and as it was presented, is that within the study area that that would go forward, and that the additional area that the council remand that back for proper notification and for whatever process is needed to uh, to deal so, with the additional area. So I want to go with recommending option number one as amended tonight. Right, and now we need to identify the properties that you want to amend to that, that it, and what that amendment might be. You want the motion? And I had written down some properties, and make sure I have all of the right ones. We could probably just read it right off of that. Eleven oh two. You want you want address or address? Let's go by address. Eleven oh two South Washington. Nine ninety eight West Twelfth. Nine oh five West Eleventh. Nine oh nine West Eleventh. Nine nine nine. West 11th could possibly be 12th because we only have numbers on here. 1129 South Jefferson. 1126 South Jefferson. 1121 South Adams. That's actually all I had, I had on my list with the exception of one. Those would be amended to uh, show those as mixed use. That's correct. That option one as presented tonight. So I make a motion. <laughs> you find the comfort plan for the air need adjustment. The pros text amendment is needed and I recommend that the city council approve option number one as amended, changing some areas from the residential overlay to the mixed use overlay at the addresses politicians just read off. And approve the parole tax amendment establishing a neighborhood conservation overlay district, neighborhood mixed use overlay district, as presented, amended in the study area, and find the comprehensive plan outside the study area in option number one that a proposed tax amendment is needed. I recommend the city council direct staff to begin the process to apply the neighborhood conservation overlay district and the neighborhood mixed use overlay district to the expanded area. Is there a second? <laughs> I'll second. Are you ready to vote? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. 
Uh, we have a motion and a second. Thank you. Oh, Motion passes four to zero. Sometimes it just didn't pretty. <laughs> Get it done. Okay. We'll now move on to agenda item three, approval of the meeting summary for discussion and possible action. Approval of the regular meeting summary for the meeting of September 5th, 2017. Move for approval. Second. Oh. Nope. I'm sorry, I stopped the voting software before you had a chance to cast your votes. Call roll. So I'm going to call roll verbally. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Lane? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Wilkins? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 0. Okay. Um, miscellaneous items from staff for discussion. The next planning commission meeting is November 3rd, 2017. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second.